Let me just start this video by showing you my mess. <laughs> See all the batik? That's what I am supposed to be working on today. But instead, I'm playing with salvages. My beautiful salvages. Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with a new video for you. I am so excited about this one. I am, but I'm not because I want to show you everything, but I don't have the time for that. And I can't have this video be too long because I really have so many other things I need to be doing. But I felt like sitting down and playing with some salvages. I've been playing with them for a little bit. I will show you some of the stuff that I came up with. Um, there's a lot to love about salvage pieces. I know most of you probably have seen stuff made with salvages or maybe you have even created some salvage blocks but hopefully you know maybe I can come up with a few new things show you what I do what I figure out what works what doesn't so let's just get started first of all these are the salvages these are just some of my salvages I regret that I've thrown salvages away for many many years but I won't be doing that anymore. Even if I don't use them all, I might put them on eBay as penny auctions or whatever. I don't know. I think I could go through a lot of these. Any salvages work. I thought I would not like the looks of salvages put together, but I, I just love it. I just love it. And there's so many kinds of salvages now. There's, you know, some with writing. There's some that don't uh, even have white, like this one. Then there's these with the little fuzzy edges. Oh my God, those are so sweet. More fuzzy edges. Just all kinds of things. These with the um, color, I, color charts, I don't know. It's just letting you know all the colors that were in this fabric. And sometimes they're circles. I had one today. <gasps> apples, look, 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 it's apples. Oh my God. Well, you know what it is? The manufacturers now know that people like the salvages. I've watched videos where there are people who buy fabric just for the salvages. They're like, oh, I like this salvage, and they'll buy a piece just so they can have a piece of the salvage. I mean, I'm sure they use the other fabric too, but they look at the salvages and, um, you know, manufacturers catch on to that. Of course, you have the writing and just all kinds of things, but I really love the fuzzies. So when I started playing with these, I just did some strip sets. This is very easy, no foundation needed. You will see people using a foundation, but if you add a foundation, whether it's muslin, which is what most people use, and I have a muslin that is very lightweight. Finally, I got the bolt today. I got a bolt a little while ago, but it was not the right kind. So I have another one that just came. And you want, you know, a lightweight fabric and you can uh, sew on a muslin foundation like we do for um, like crazy quilting. I'll link down below to my crazy quilt series. Do I have one? I'm sure I do. But I just laid my selvages together one on top of the other. So you would take like this piece and salvage on this end and then you take another piece. Let me take one that's got a salvage showing. Let's go with the apples and you would just put that, there's actually two there, but I'll just show you. You put that on top of that and then you sew down. You know, and it can get a little bit warped because there is no foundation and you just sew right on the very edge of the salvage and then you just keep piecing those that's very quick and easy and it's very good for quilt blocks because it's very flexible very light I thought the salvages themselves would make it stiff but they don't and I do a lot of cutting of like five and a quarter inch squares, so I'm forever getting salvages this length. So that's why you're seeing, you know, these pieces. Obviously, if you have, which is the right side? This is. Obviously, if you, um, you know, buy yardage and you want to cut your salvages off first, you can. And you really don't need much. I even use salvages like this that only have a tiny, tiny bit of the fabric showing 
because I can just put something right over there and some of the, you know, the words will still show. I just love it so much. So I have this piece. I'll just show you a few of the pieces that I made. This was just to play and I haven't done anything with them. And I wasn't really paying attention as to whether or not, well, obviously the words will all be in the same direction because they're always, like, if you're reading it with the salvage this way, the words are not going to be upside down. So I guess that works. I never even really paid attention to that. And I have this piece, which you can see I didn't quite catch there, so I would have to fix that. And like this... And like this, and I haven't, um, I guess it's like this, you know, I haven't sewn any together. You know, obviously it would make a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a stiffer block. But I will revisit this and we will be doing more of this because I really like the ease of doing it this way. Now, instead of using a muslin I used no foundation. Instead of a muslin foundation, we could always use the fusible um, iron-on fusible as a foundation. We're going to be doing that today, but I will say that the black fusible that I love so much, stabilizer, whatever you want to call it, it's just uh, glue on one side, and I have done some videos using that. It's really a pain in the ass for me to get that because it comes on a roll and I have to go and just say I want 30 yards and I, you know, say, can we do it in like four yard cuts just because I don't want a big wadded up massive ball of 30 yards of that stuff and it's wide so it's hard when I get home I have to try to lay that out and cut it it's just too time consuming so I'm going to be uh, today using some other fusible that is not it's called featherweight, but it's not as featherweight as the black that I love so much. But this is a really good weight if you want to make tote bags or pillows, you know, like decorative pillows, anything like that. It could also be used in a quilt if you want a weighted quilt. I know it's just, uh, it's just that much heavier, but we're going to be doing that today. So what I did is I wanted to play with the diagonal and I cut, uh, I think, like an 8-inch square. And even my longest salvages weren't really long enough because I don't really have a lot of long salvages. Probably the longest is like 9.5 inches. For, for when I cut my fat 16ths, I take the salvages off those. So I thought, I'm just going to, you know, finish it. Like here is one, and then I just put another one on top. And when I was sewing this down... I meant to go and sew there and completely forgot, same as here. Um, so, you know, I could always do that. But, you know, I like it. Look, look at the bird. Look at the white bird. And um, so that's good, you know, and it's a little bit stiffer, but it's a good weight for tote bags. However, I have a lot of short salvages, so I thought I'm going to cut a small block and I want to do the diagonal on here, and that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to show you how to do it assembly line style. And I've already learned a little tip that I haven't seen. Of course, I haven't watched too many videos about this, but I'll just show you what I do and how to make it all very easy. And uh, let's get started. I hate working in a messy space. I really do. I have one rule. When I go to bed, everything has to be put away. And I have been following that rule, and I like that rule. But I don't know why it's such a mess right now, but it is. Okay, um, you can cut whatever size squares you want. I actually will put some of this on eBay by the yard. I'm not going to cut the squares for you. You can cut whatever size squares you want. I don't have a whole lot of it, but I will have some in case you want to grab some and play with it. Um, I'm going to be making two squares with you. I have two already made, and then we're going to try making a four patch. Now, I have not tried putting them together. I just don't know. Uh, you know, how that's going to turn out, but we're going to give it a shot. So here's the deal. Oh, yes, 
another thing I learned, especially on the bigger block that I showed you, the bigger diagonal, you know, I thought it would be easy. I didn't want it like too wonky because when I have a four patch, I would kind of like it to look like a diamond. It can be a wonky diamond, but it's hard. It was hard when I started getting toward the center because we start here and we work our way up. And as I was getting to the center, I was really off by a lot. So I make lines now. I just write right on this. Make sure your glue side is up. And I'm just going to draw a line on the diagonal. And then I'm just going to use the width of the ruler to make another line. I just want a couple lines just to give me something to focus on. And here too. And let me do this one. And then I find the easiest way is to have it on point, pointing to me. Then I can see that my selvage is straight. Now for the corner, we're going to start with small pieces of selvages. I do have that for when I cut my two inch squares that I sell and I've never had any make it to eBay. They, they always sell out in my flash sales and fabric frenzies, but eventually some of them will make it to eBay. But um, see, I have these little short selvages, perfect for a um, corner. So I'm going to take my little piece and I'm going to put it on the corner. And I just want to make sure, you know, it's really covering the corner. And then I want to put another piece here. Let's put this, now this, that one's too pretty. Oh my God, it's so hard to decide. I hate that. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. And you really want to make sure that you're over the edge of your fusible. Okay. Um, always selvage side aiming toward you. Now, this one is all one color. That's fine. I've actually seen some people use it the other way. They flip it. I don't know. I have nothing against a colorful selvage. Let's put one in there like that. Now let's put this guy so we can have all those little numbers. <gasps> Not long enough. All right, so I have to do something else there. Let me find a longer selvage. I know I have some <gasps> acorns. And, you know, I don't lay it just like this because then that gives me just two little pieces of scraps. So I lay it like this so that when I trim, I've got this whole selvage for another project. And make sure that you overlap, you know, probably at least a quarter of an inch. Now can we put this guy? Ooh, yes, with all the numbers. Probably just two more pieces. Let's put this right here. And let's put this for our... Oh, I don't like to use fuzzies at the end. <laughs> They're going to get cut off. Oh, no, they won't. Look, the fuzzies are going to be aiming toward me. Oh, my goodness. Perfect. All right, we're going to press this. Most people use a dry iron. I am such a steam freak that I steam everything. All right, that should be good. And then what I do is I flip it, and I'm going to just trim using, where's my scissors? Oh, everything is so messed up. Using the fusible as a guide, I about a quarter of an inch away from there, and I just do that all the way around. Whoops, that didn't get stuck. My iron wasn't hot enough because of that stupid auto off that drives me crazy. All right, that should be hot enough now. Ooh, an arrow. Now let me make another one just like that. Well, not just like it, you know what I mean. So I'm going to take a little salvage. I'm not going to waste these guys. I'm going to put them to good use right there. Just remember, the salvage edge is always toward you. And if you can't tell, because sometimes it's hard, just look at the other side and you'll see like the, the needle holes. And just make sure you cover uh, the edges of the fusible. 
drawing the lines really does help me. So maybe it will help you. Hey, let's do acorn again. Is it the same color? I had two colors of acorn fabric. Make sure I'm over this enough. Throw some more pink in. Not quite long enough. We'll do this pink. I think that's long enough. And see, this one has salvage and then just a little bit of white. Oh, I like that there. This, oh, let's go this way. Well, there's a little tiny piece right there. We'll cover it. Oops, salvage toward me. I have to remember that. Pressing. Now, if I were making a project, you know, that I needed multiple blocks or a quilt, I would do all my blocks and then I would go to the machine with all of them at once and do my chain piecing. But I'm only going to be doing two with you today. So that's all I'm bringing to the machine with me. Oh my God, I have so many ideas for this. I can't wait to show you everything. All right, let's go to the machine with our two blocks. Oh, they're pretty already. Here's one little thing that I did that helped a lot in sewing these. For the big diagonal block, I didn't do it. And when you are sewing on your selvages, you know, the fabric can lift up at the end and it was just a little bit sloppy and I didn't care for that. So what I did for the last two that I did, which are the practice pieces that will go with these guys, I started by putting my block upside down and I just sewed just to the edge of the fusible all the way around. I mean, probably like an eighth of an inch in. Doesn't really matter because it'll get caught in the seam allowance, but just go ahead and sew around each block. I just pivot and go. I don't even take that off. I just bring the next one and I do the same. Now if I had another block, I would do the same to the next one and the next one and the next one. Depending on how many blocks you do, yet if you're making a hundred of these, maybe do ten at a time. Anyway, whatever works for you. Now, I'm still leaving that right there. Now, I'm going to start sewing on my selvages. So, sometimes it's hard, but you can see it. You know, they're all in the same direction. And I'm just going to sew just on the inside. This one happens to be fuzzy. I don't want to just sew on the fuzzy part because that won't be holding it good. So, on this side of the fuzzies. So, let me just start with that. I'm leaving it there. I'm going to take this guy off and I'm going to send him through. And you can put these very close together. What the hell am I sewing? Okay, I'm going to <laughs> go this way. <laughs> so I'm sewing right here. And if I had another one, I would send it through, send it through. And since I don't, I'm just going to snip the one I have in the back. And now I'm going to sew here, my next salvage bringing it up close and again I would send the next one through but in my case I'm taking this one ooh, all the way over here this time and I'm going very close to the edge gee maybe I can show you uh, it's gonna be hard because my thread is like a cream color but here let me see if you can see hopefully you got to see that now I'm going on this one, because the selvage won't fray. That's the beauty of them. So you don't have to do zigzag or anything like that. You're just stitching them down. And now at this point, you know, I'm just going to turn the block and I'm going to start going in the other, you know, on the other side. It's just a little easier for me. I don't know. Whatever works for you. Turning it, go on this side. There's my selvage right there. It can be hard to spot them if they're not a selvage with white. You can always just feel it. See, my finger goes under there, so that's the little sucker that I have to sew down. Right there. Do 
Do I have any left here? I do. I do. I didn't even realize my acorn strips are the two different colors. That's cool. Okay, I think this guy is done. Making sure that my finger doesn't go under it. Look, I missed one way over here. This is for sure my new favorite thing. Another one there. And you can use a contrasting thread because it adds like little, you know, lines of color, like little stripes. I didn't do it just because I was too lazy to change my thread. But we will be doing it. We'll be doing a lot with this. Okay, I really think I've got them all this time. Make sure this one too. Yes, 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 yes. All right, back to the other table. Now all I do at this point is I just use my scissors because I have no room to cut because everything's a mess. And I just trim next to the fusible using that as my guide. It doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, that's what I'm doing right here. If I had a bunch of blocks, then I would probably use my rotary cutter. How am I going to have time to do all the things I want to do? Ugh. Okay, let's look. Let's looky looky. See how cool that is? I just love it. I even love the needle holes, or uh, pin holes, whatever you call them, um, that the salvages have. Now, where's my other two that I made earlier? See, I made two others, so I have four now. Look at this one. This was on the salvage. A dog's face. And then I picked a salvage up, and it said the teacher's pet. Now, I know a teacher's pet is a kid, but look. That's literally the teacher's pet. <laughs> so it's just so fun. So fun. So what I want to do is I want to point... Um, how do I explain it? Like this, they're going in the same direction, but I want like this corner in with this corner. Look, I have a fuzzy... I have a fuzzy wuzzy salvage right there. But here's one thing I didn't plan. The blocks now, see the writing is going that way, this one's going that way. I guess I would have had to have planned it. Well, no, can I do that? Yes! What a ding-dong. I just have to turn it. So that should work no matter what, right? That determines. All right. Um, yeah, see, if you're looking at it, you can read everything. It's all going in that direction. Look, look at that. Look at the diamond we made. Oh, but... I don't really want the acorns together like that. So this way I could do and like that. Now I don't like that I have <laughs> See, I can't be fussy like that. But if you're making a lot of blocks, you would have enough to play with that you could, you know, figure out how you want it. But that is super cool, don't you think? I think. How about if we put this one here and this one here? <gasps> okay. Now we have all kinds of different stuff going on. That's very white. Oh, my God. I can see that I'm going to have issues with this. Okay, let's move this and this. <laughs> all right, I'm going with this, I guess. Am I... Am I making another change here, here? I just really wanted this part to be all four different, and they are now. And my acorns are not in the same row. Okay, we have a four patch. That took a long time. Now, oh, this is the part that I hate to try because I don't want to fuck it all up. But I'm thinking if I sew that and fold that back, it's just going to be quite stiff. The other thing I thought is if I sewed, you know, a decent seam allowance, then when I opened it up after it was sewn, but it's more work, but then we could open it like this, 
you know, press it open. And we could even, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, stitch down on each one to make it more flat. We could do that. It really eats up a lot of the block, but we could do that. The only other thing is, and I don't care for it in this, you know, design, is, you know, to just top stitch, but that's raw edge, and I don't feel like doing zigzag here. So we're going to have to um, go like this and sew. I think that's our only option. Let's go to the machine. I guess I'm going to try just a quarter of an inch seam allowance so I don't eat up the whole block and we'll see how that presses out. Pretty sure I didn't do a perfect job with that. You know that whole thing right there could be just folded over. I don't know. I'm going to try pressing it open. All right. I kind of like it that way, pressed open. Now, I would never be making an entire quilt with these little small squares. So, you know, I could deal with pressing open. It was really actually easier to do because of the, um, the fusible. It's more stable, so it was really easy to do, and you know, to make a tote bag or something. And you might say, well, what do you, how do you make a tote bag? Well, you can make your tote bag panels as big as you want, front and back, and then just make yourself a tote bag. Now let's put this together. There's my center, right? Nope, because the, uh, the writing isn't the right way. It wasn't that way. It had to be that way. That's correct. I don't know what I was looking at before. This is correct. So now I'm going to put these together and it's pretty easy to match up my intersection as best as I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. We always know that. And I'm going to sew. And I am going to make sure that my intersections you know, that the seam allowances are laying the way they're supposed to. I don't want any flipped ones because it's too thick to have it flipped. Now, if I wanted to, I could have tried sewing those down just to see what that would have looked like before I did it. I think it would look really cool because it would add extra lines. Oh my God. Can I retire and just do this for the rest of my life? I love this so much. Why? Why do I love something like this so much? It's not normal. <laughs> Let me press that open. I can't even believe what a good intersection I did. And it's okay if it's not perfect because it's already wonky because of the print. But look, I have to show off. Is there some threads going on? Oh, it's my little fuzzy. Oh, it got lost, but look, there's a little bit of fuzziness. And then look at the back. That looks nice and neat. I think I did a good job. I like this. Oh my God. I really love it. I do have, I don't know, the words aren't all going in the right direction like I thought I had it. I don't know what I did. I turned something around. I don't care. I don't think I would worry too much about which direction the wording is. Oh, it works this way. All the wording is correct. All right, it's just a matter of how we look at it. See, this way, this way it's not. Some is this way, this is down, that's this way. Oh, so there is like a right way and a wrong way to put it. How was it? Oh my God, I'm making too much out of this. You guys are sick of me now. It's like this. I like it very much. I hope you do too. And uh, yeah, just put up with my excitedness, okay? I, ha I have a very boring life. <laughs> This made me happy today. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, I'll put this. Do I? It's my first. Should I keep it? 
I might put it up for a penny auction. I don't really need this, do I? I have to let go. I do. I have to. This will be up for a penny auction in a couple days. I don't know when my next ones come out. So um, when it's out, I will put the link down below and you can uh, bid on this baby. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.